Good afternoon and welcome to the Finley Recreation Center in the Mayflower Conference Championship here on the Westbrook College Television Network. Hello everybody, I'm Jay Harper along with Ron Crosby as we get set for Westbrook College versus Green Mountain and for the second year in a row the Wildcats look to move to the NAIA Championships in Idaho. Ron, you look at this matchup today, of course a couple of big things inside the paint. Westbrook College doing a nice job yesterday versus Castleton, withstood a lot of charges to prevail in that one. Green Mountain, a very balanced team as are the Wildcats. Should be a good matchup. Yeah, it should be. In yesterday's matchup, the, the, the big guys for Westbrook were dealing with two underclassmen, two freshmen. But the two big guys for Green Mountain, Wiener and George, have been in the system a long time, and they know what to do, and I'm sure they're more prepared for this game than any other game they've ever played in. Now, of course, at the Finley Recreation Center, second year in a row, this place should be rocking. The intensity is there. The Wildcats seem ready to play. And, of course, Green Mountain struggled with Westbrook College on this floor, not coming any closer than about 25 points in all their meetings here. So how big a factor do you think that will be in their minds today? Well, Matt Dempsey, the Green Mountain coach, said it about a year ago that every time he comes here, he feels like he's going to the hospital because it's white and he always feels like he's been operated on because Coach Graffin dissects his team every time. Well, I think he's going to be prepared. He was prepared two years ago when he met us in the Expo. He's prepared. I think this is going to be a great matchup. Yeah, and they did a nice job at Johnson State yesterday in their semifinal game, playing a very good game. They're a little bit banged up, though. Goversky has the uh, hamstring on the left leg. They got one player who's out with the uh, ankle injury from yesterday and another player was sick all last night. So uh, they're a little bit shaken up and I don't know how they'll come out out of the blocks. Well, this is championship basketball. Gabrowski's not gonna feel that. The other kid's not gonna feel the ankle. This is championship basketball. They're ready to play. They're not even gonna feel the ankle or the hamstring. They're gonna go out and give it their all and it's gonna be a great matchup. Now, as far as Westbrook College, again, Derek Vogel, 30 points yesterday, a huge game. Kuhn was 16 in that big three. They need those two players once again to step up and Gary Kuhn has to come out of the gates just a little bit hotter from behind the arc. Well, Gary had said something to me before. He said he's never gone cold two games in a row. So you expect a lot from Gary Kuhn. But the big factor in this game will be Eric Workin, Nate Estes, and Derek Vogel down low. They've got to establish that they can play with Justin Wiener and Ollie George. And if they can do that, this game should be a pretty even matchup. Now, of course, Workin did have a big game with the blocks yesterday. He started intimidating people in that second half. Again, he'll look to do the same this afternoon. The kid can really get up in the air and block some shots. And we saw his baseline dunk yesterday, about as good as any you'll yeah. see. Yeah, and, and, and we've been expecting that from him for about two years now, and he finally stepped up and did it. But I think he matches up okay with Ollie George, but the strength of Wiener will be a real test for Eric Workin. All right, it's Westbrook College versus Green Mountain right after this on the Westbrook College Television Network. We're back with the opening tip off and starting lineups. Mountain College, Matt Dempsey. Matt, congratulations, of course, on making the conference finals here this afternoon. First off, though, we'd like to know, what are your impressions of Westbrook College and, and their program? Well, they obviously have a terrific program going on right here, and they're having another solid season. Last year, coming off a championship uh, winning year, and this year, I hope, you know, they're looking to do the same, and we're hoping they can, so uh, it should be an interesting matchup today. How about the tournament in general being held here for the second year in a row at the Finley Recreation Center at Westbrook College and what they do to host this tournament? Well, they do a super job hosting a tournament and, um, you know, they put on a first-class operation here and, you know, the hat, my hat goes off to everybody involved. I know it takes a lot of effort to, to produce a tournament of this nature and, um, you know, they've done a hell of a job. Now, as far as your team and your program, what have you done to make Green Mountain successful? We just brought in a lot of talent. We're just trying to blend that talent each year. We've got uh, a lot of juniors and sophomores, only one senior this year, so we should have another competitive team next year. Right now we're 24 and 6 and having a great year, and, and hopefully, again, we have one game away from going to the national tournament. Now, what do you plan this afternoon going against Westbrook College? What are your game plans, how you stop them, and what you look to do offensively? I don't think you ever stop Westbrook. They just, uh, you know, they're going to get their points. We just hope that they don't get over 100 and uh, try and keep, keep the tempo down a little bit. I mean, we don't want to hold the ball, but we need to uh, control the tempo, and they want it up and down as fast as they can go, and, you know, somewhere in between would be fine with us. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Jay Harper along with Ron Crosby, Mark Cantra, Dennis Avery, Steve Poulos, Tony Ryan working with us here this afternoon as we get set for the Mayflower Conference Championship. And Derek Bogle yesterday scoring 30 points. His 30th point 
The only one that knew was assistant coach John Tolan that that was his 2,000th point, and he was so wrapped up in the game, he didn't realize it. And Vogel, 2,000 career points. He will be the number one all-time scorer in the state of Maine by the time he finishes his career next year at Westbrook College. And don't forget, Jay, he missed six games a season. Amazing. He can play. He can play this game. His parents with him, and a great moment for Derek Vogel. And the Westbrook College Wildcats. Vogel will accept it with grace, as he always does, and get ready for today's huge matchup. Championship round here this afternoon. The Wildcats men and women's team once again in the finals. It's the Green Mountain College Eagles versus the Westbrook College Wildcats. And should be a good one. The two, two very well coached teams. Matt Dempsey does a great job with the Eagles, a very humble, nice man. He has good assistance with him, as does coach Jim Grafham of the Wildcats. Starting five for the Eagles, Ryan Goverski, Almar Brown, Ollie George, Cedric Spence, and Justin Wiener. <laughs> And those are your starting five for the Eagles, and trust me, they're ready to play, too. And, and four, four of those guys do have playoff experience. They're ready to go. They know what it takes. And, of course, we saw Castleton State hanged up all day yesterday, and we expect the same from Green Mountain. And there's the little general, the Taz, the Melrose kid, a lot of nicknames, but one thing he is, and that is a basketball player. Bob Davies, again, showing the same emotion as yesterday. Davies played football, and that's, that's the football feeling. You come out and start pounding each other and screaming. You've got to love helmets, it. Slapping helmets, slapping helmets. Vogel, Workin, McClure, Lennon, and Bob Davies, your starting five for Westbrook College. And they look ready to play. The gym's still filling up, pretty much at capacity, but there'll be a lot more people coming in as the game progresses. A two o'clock start. Hopefully the Wildcats can come out on that tail like they did yesterday against Castleton. They came out smoking. Ollie George, 6'7", junior from Point Pleasant, New Jersey, will jump it up against Workin. Workin, big game yesterday. 14 points, five to six blocks, and numerous rebounds. And we're ready. Conference championship. Wildcats, Eagles on the Westbrook College television network. Kowarski, the quick dump down, and right away, the Eagles. Justin Wiener, a quick two, and it's two nothing, Green Mountain. Inside, Vogel looking for point 2002, doesn't get it. Rebound controlled by Spence, and he leave it for Gaberski, and now they'll give it to their point guard, Alamar Brown. He does a great job defensively and offensively. He is a sensational point guard as well. Nice job yesterday versus Johnson State. He's going to be harassing Andy Lennon the whole game. He's quick. Pull-up shot, no good, but in the paint. Ollie George. Nobody put a body on George. That's where the game's going to be decided, is in the paint. And starting the game, Vogel has 2,000 even. And starting the game today, Gary Kuhn has 1,600 even. <laughs> they both scored their career numbers at the end. McClure, long shot, no good. Vogel the rebound. Goes for Davies. Davies thinks about it, but he'll drive in instead. Tries the window, working up. Draws the foul, and great job by working and the Wildcats going to the offensive glass. Jeez, I, thought, I thought Bob Davies got bumped a little, but that was a great follow by Eric Working. and misses the first free throw. It's 4-0, Green Mountain. 
Working, rims out the second. And not the start Westbrook College was looking for. Brown with Lennon all over him. McClure now will switch and pick him up. Kowarski behind the arc, Davies blocks it. We've seen him do that a few times this year. Being able to recover and make the nice block. Oh. And he gets in the face of Goverski. Get that out of here. Davies has excellent leaping ability, and he certainly knows how to time that jump. That's the key to that, knowing when to go up. Inside pass for George, and he loses it. A good defensive effort right there by the Wildcats, and they needed that stop. Vogel drives in, gets a bump, bang. He wanted the foul, didn't get it. 4-2, and points 2001 and 2002 for the junior. Most valuable player in the conference. Spence will try it. Long, Davies the rebound, off for Lennon. He's got Vogel. Lennon's gonna take it to the rack, and he gets swatted. That was a good call by the official. He smacked, he slapped the ball right off Corey McClaw's hands. And talk about timing up a jump. Not sure who got that. Was that Spence come flying in from behind? Yeah, it was Spence coming up. Good timing on his part. Goverski from behind the arc. Got it. 7-2. She said at the top of the cast, Green Mountain has never been within 25 at this building. Davies drive, will it drop? It does. Count that. A little trash talking going on now. And I think we're gonna see quite a bit of that this afternoon between these two teams. Working and McCor will sit down. Willoughby Esty come in the front court for Westbrook College. These two teams have become quite a rival. As you remember, two years ago, they, they beat, uh, beat Westbrook uh, at the Expo. Came out 20 nothing in the first five minutes. So this team's ready to play. Bob Davies completes the three-point play, and here he comes. Gary Kuhn, the kid from Jersey. Hopefully tough, he can get on track right away. Tough day from behind the arc yesterday, but what a complete game he played. 94 threes on the season. If he hits six, he'll hit the century mark. Pull up by Spence, no good. Follows his shot up inside over Willoughby. 9-5. Brown steals Lennon's and Lennon gets whacked. <laughs> Lennon took a shot in the mouth and he gets whistled for the foul. Need a stop here. 9-5, Eagles with a lead and the basketball. Davies working on Brown. <laughs> and he could read the lips of Ollie George there, and we can't repeat what he said, but he didn't have anything kind to say to the official. Bob Davies taking charge at the point, in for Lennon. Brown riding him hard. Davies all the way to the rack, but Brown strips him. Well, there's a matchup there that Green Mountain likes. Oh, what a putback by George. It was behind him, and he grabbed it with two hands and threw it up and in. Kuhn will try it. Not good. And the rebound, Goverski. He's short again. He doesn't have his legs in the shot. Kick back for George. Pulls up and in, and the Wildcats need a T.O. And they get a T.O. 13 to five, a great start for the Green Mountain Eagles. And Westbrook College needs a timeout and will listen in to Coach Jim Grafham. 
talk in that huddle is rebounding on the defensive boards and certainly that has hurt Westbrook College. Yeah, most of well, the two baskets that all of George has scored this half have been off re uh, rebounds. So whoever's guarding him, like the young freshman Ben Willoughby, he's got to get a body on him. Davies, Estes, Q, and Willoughby and Vogel on the floor for Westbrook College. Estes takes it, makes it. Gary Kuhn again with his defense. It's whacked by Goversky, no call. Wiener pulls up, nothing but net. 15-7. Esty behind the arc, way short. And way out in front, all alone, Wiener, Davies. Need some defense here. Rutgers got to step it up inside, play some defense here. Esty and Willoughby will sit down. Stan Webb in for the first time. Work in returns. Goverski behind the arc. Short rebound though. Wiener pushes, muscles, and he'll draw the foul. He has that big frame working for him inside the paint, as you said at the top of the cast. He is a force, and right now nobody able to control him. Big, strong kid. Takes the ball well to the hole. He averages 10.2 points per game, nine rebounds per contest. Goversky, their leading scorer, in 15.4. One of two, Davies gets the rebound. 16 to seven, nine point lead for Green Mountain. Working from the corner. No good. Long rebound tracked down by Goverski. Westbrook still in that shooting something they were in yesterday. Seems like that rim's got a lid on it. Webb right now covering the big guy Wiener as George pulls up and buries it. Vogel, three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And the three ball good. It's 18-10 and a big bucket by Vogel. Westbrook needs to get a stop here, get on the offensive end again, get their confidence up. George just whacks him down, and the referee says, no, I don't think so. And George playing like a man possessed out there. Inside working. In the paint, hit, and it'll go back to the free throw line. Ollie George is dominating a 6'7 junior from Point Pleasant, New Jersey, along with Justin Wiener, the 6'7 junior out of West Rutland, Vermont, really making things happen for Green Mountain. and regains the stroke from the free throw line. Only one of two. Long range shot, Brown, a two. 22-11. Kuhn, three ball, short again. Got to get the, try and get the ball inside now. Oh. 
traveling the call on George. Thirteen oh three to go, first half. Green Mountain, twenty two eleven. Derek Vogel, three ball, and he's got two, and boy, the net still laughing on that one as he tickles a twine from way downtown. And the Wildcats within eight. Work it, get that shot out of here. Webb on the break, grabbed, and it doesn't go down. Well, Derek Vogel's intensity is picked up. Now the rest of the Wildcats are gonna pick theirs up as equal as him. He can't do it all himself. They're saying the foul was on the floor. So even if that fell, it wouldn't have counted. Working, baseline shot, long and Spence the rebound. No need to rush the shot there. Should have gone and worked the ball around, maybe found Derek, or, or maybe given Gary Kuhn another shot. I think everybody trying to find their shooting stroke, working another steal. Outlet for Kuhn, they got Vogel out ahead. They find Vogel, Vogel stays on the short side and buries it. That was a good find by Gary Kuhn. And we're gonna, see, we're gonna see some fisticuffs here before too long. You can see it, Jerry Joy, the type of player he is, him and Workin now pushing each other up the court. And George yesterday, excuse me, Joy yesterday, an intense player, you saw him in the game against Johnson State. And he's not afraid to mix it up, and him and Workin going at it, and a good two defensive stops for Westbrook College, Eric Workin right there in the middle of both of them. Every, each team needs an excitable kid, and I guess that's Green Mountain's excitable kid. And Ollie George isn't too bad either. These two teams <laughs> really match each other in a lot of ways, and certainly in intensity, and they're both ready to play this one as Green Mountain has come out fired up and really red hot from the field as they have a six-point lead. Westbrook College, the ones now chipping away at the lead and hanging tough. And again, having not a good shooting first half as they did yesterday. Struggled from the field. Full court pressure by Westbrook College. Spence bringing the ball up with Vogel on him. Now they get it to Brown with Lennon. Guarding. Webb goes for a steal. Shot from the corner by Spence. No good. All alone is Joy. Joy triple fake. And traveling call because, boy, I thought they were going to call the foul on work, and he got nothing but basketball. And Joy gave him a triple fake, and <laughs> Workin still was there to make the block. Well, that's why Eric Workin is, is such a good block shot. He knows when to time it, and he goes up well with it. Look at that shot by Derek Vogel. DV with the BC. Immense body control. Wow. DV with the big C because he's a PTP. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep your lingual up there, Jake. Well, I could have brought more, but I didn't want to confuse any of our viewers. Inside and put up and in by Wiener. Big strong move by the big junior. Lead back to six, 24-18, Green Mountain. Vogel now playing possessed, draws the back, draws the bump, and he'll go back to the free throw line. Derek Vogel right now feeling it, and he's right now the only player who seems to have his shooting touch going for the Wildcats. Call that a one and one foul too. I thought that was a shooting foul. I agree with you there. Seventh team foul, so it's one and one. The Wildcats only have two team fouls at this point with 10.54 to go. First half, it's a four point game, 24-20, Green Mountain. I don't agree with that call at all. Just let him play. 
He wasn't reaching. Gubberski's going into him as much as Davey's going back into him. Third team foul. First on Davies. Nice drive, Gubberski. Bob Davies looking for a little help. He's going to be able to stop, step up and stop him. Call a jump ball. The arrow favors Westbrook College. A quick whistle on the tie up there. Wildcats will certainly take that. Working all alone, but had his body twisted around, couldn't put it down. Nice call by a trail official. Matt Dempsey out there saying, Coach Grappham grabbed that before anyone had a chance to save it. Vogel working on Spence. Gets it. Wow. He's feeling it today. Vogel up around 15 points already in the first half. Dish down, Wildcats the steal. Davies with Workin on the left. Cross, Workin, bucket. Glory pass by Bob Davies, heads up. And it's a two point game, Wildcats down 26-24. They're digging deep, digging deep into their defense. And another turnover. And coaching staff loving it. Jim Grapham, Mike Johnson, John Tolan, Bruce Powers. I'm a little concerned. Matt Dempsey's keeping his big guys in there a long time. He needs them. He's got to give those guys a quick break. Davies can't contain it. Diving, trying to save it. Goes out of bounds. Great hustle by the freshman. Kuhn will check back in. Davies will get a break. George from behind the arc, in and out. Vogel the rebound, they got numbers. Working on the lob, waits too long, looks for the three. Inside McClure, dumps down Lennon. Won't go down, but there's Working. He goes in with the big guy, hammered. Lennon in with the trees, fights it up. And coming out of there is Spence for Green Mountain. Hard to imagine there was no foul somewhere in that scenario. Turn around and call that. It was like Corey McClough had most ball, most of the ball. Great shot by George, though. He really muscled it up, got it in. But down inside the paint, when the Wildcats had about five shots, hard to imagine no one got hit somewhere along there. Normally, Andy, Andy Lennon would probably try and dribble out of that, but he was circled by four guys. He had no option but to go back up with it. George completes the three-point play. Officials, though, all in all, do a great job. This is a tough game to officiate. Such high intensity and such great defensive work. They let some stuff go, and they keep some stuff in there. Three-pointer miss. Aaron McCaw, the freshman, with the rebound and put back. 29-26. I'm still a little surprised, Jay, that they still only have two officials for a championship game. I mean, they go with three officials during conference games. They come down to the championship and only put two officials in. Doesn't make sense. Now, Cross, if you were a good color commentator, you would have found out yesterday after the game why that happened. <laughs> Sorry, Jay. Only my second game. I'm still learning. <laughs> we'll have to try to check on that at halftime. <laughs> a foul on Aaron McClure, and Stan Webb will give Derek Vogel a break. Vogel's third three attempt just 
missing. He needed that break. He needed a quick break. Get his get his legs back into him. It's a real surprise. Gary Keenan still hasn't made one. Just back into the lineup. 0 for 2 so far. Cedric Spence, 6'4 junior from Brooklyn, New York. Makes his first free throw and it's 30-26. 7.44 to go, first half. Jay Harper along with Ron Crosby on the Westbrook College Television Network. Second one misses and Aaron McClure, nice job getting the rebound over Wiener. It's a tough box out right there, boxing that big kid out. Nice job by the freshman. Hume gets the pick, pull up, bang. Funny how we were just talking about that. Wide open underneath, Gary Alvarez, the 6'2 sophomore from Rutherford, New Jersey. And he misses the layup. Webb gets the board and hit from behind by Justin Wiener. Wiener's second personal foul. And again, that's one thing that Matt Dempsey has to be careful of. He's given these big guys a lot of PT. They are playing a lot of minutes out there in, here in the first half and certainly coming off yesterday's draining emotional victory in the semifinals. Got to wonder about how long their legs can last. Webb, great concentration, but it rattles out and ooh, George throws some vicious elbows. Diving across is working, knocks it out of bounds. Great hustle. Mike Lee out for the second day in a row due to sickness and got his loafers on in his warm up outfit. 30 to 29, the Wildcats within one. Hume picks up the loose ball. He's thinking about it, drives in, gets grabbed on the arm, and Derek Hume will go to the free throw line. I believe that'll be the 10th team foul, so he'll shoot two. Back to Mike Lee. Him, him being out, is they're missing an experienced point guard. Mike being such a prolific scorer at SNTC. That's kind of hurt a little bit to have him on the sidelines. It's the ninth team foul, so it is still one and one, so Keenan will have to make the first one. which he does. We're tied at 30. 6.55 to go. Derek Vogel back into the lineup. Got about a minute and a half. Lane violation called on Bob Davies as he leaned in to give instructions. Got too close to the shooter. Shooter had the ball. It's one of those stupid rules, but it's there and it's called be different if it was the opposing team, but your own teammate comes in. The pull up blocked. Blocked again. Aaron McClure going to pick up his second personal and didn't like the call. Justin Wiener misses the first free throw, and that's got to be a name you had to uh, get a little ribbing along the way throughout the years. Until he reached this size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to say it to him in person. Vogel down the right side. Look at the body control. Doesn't get it down, but what a great job at getting through traffic and getting the shot off. And George is going ballistic with the elbows. Him and Aaron McClure now jostling underneath. I believe he's going to call a double foul here. 
it is. That's the third one on Ollie George. It is. It's a double foul. Gotta love how the freshman's not backing down. Staying along with him. Both players are picking up their third personal, but in this scenario, nothing against Aaron McClure. He's come in and provided some very good minutes here with a bucket and some strong defense, but the Wildcats will take that because the switch off there, George, such a tough, big player for the Eagles, and McClure, only a spot player, a freshman for the Wildcats. And Alvarez, Gets the rebound and the putback and draws a foul. And Aaron McClure picks up his fourth. He must have got him with the body because from our angle it didn't look like he touched him at all. Got to like the intensity Aaron McClure coming out here and really getting in and not backing down to anybody out there. Picks up four fouls and three or four minutes of play. That's not good, but stolen by Alvarez and Brown coming down. Kuhn. Offensive foul, and Gary Kuhn loves it. What a great job by Kuhn, the senior, getting down, in on Brown, and Brown pushed off. They need his leadership. He's stepping up, and they need that. That's just savvy and knowledge of the game. Kuhn didn't get in there new. He was staying off, and, and Brown was trying to ride him out. But Kuhn wasn't going to back down. Davies afloat, and there is Stan Webb. Can you say leap? Webb up over the rim and lays it back up and in on the pretty tip-in, and it's 33-32, Green Mountain by a point. Swat. Davies gets hammered by Goverski. And Eric Gorkin, my goodness. I don't think we said enough good things about him yesterday, <laughs> Mr. Crosby. But he certainly deserves a whole heck of a lot of credit for the victory yesterday and what he's doing here in the first half. The same thing as yesterday. Blocking shots, stealing the basketball. Just great defense out there by Workin. And you look at that guy, skinny, 6'7", doesn't look like an imposing player. But boy, he just has such athletic ability. Well, like I said earlier, he's got a great nose for a blocking shot. The coaches now have to figure out, hey, he can block shots. We've got to do something else to go around him. Timeout on the floor. The score tied at 33 with 5.18 to go. You're watching Westbrook College basketball on the Westbrook College television network. Hey, that was a great block. 33, stay, yeah. 33, stay, and be ready to rotate, right? They don't have a guy on the floor. We should be able to pick this pass off or at least try to get a guy handling the ball that doesn't want to handle it, okay? And everybody rebound down here, okay? Once the ball goes up, stay. And then push it right down that front, that, that tight. We got five minutes to put the hammer down, and I, I got a good feeling right now. Well, you heard Coach Grafham. He's got a good feeling right now. Tied at 33, but the Wildcats working hard, and really, the defense again, and they're starting to get some shots to fall, and things are starting to go their way here. They're looking for their first lead of the game right here. Bob Davies can make this free throw. Wasn't pretty, but he drills it in. And it's 34-33, Westbrook College with their first lead. Lennon, Webb, Kuhn, Wurtgen, and Vogel on the floor. Spence, Wiener, Alvarez, Joy. And the big guy, James Young, in for his first minutes. Young with the basketball now. Joy behind the arc. Short. Rebound, Webb. Outlet, Vogel. Back in the middle, Lennon coming through. Dishes down, working, get four people up. and He just throws the ball up knowing I'm not going to get it in because there's three people right up there to block it, but I'm going to go to the free throw line. I think they call that on Justin Wiener. That's his third. 
And this could be a big, big development here in the first half. Wiener and George now with three personals apiece. Green Mountain has some depth, as we talked about. They do have a lot of bodies they come with, but I don't think their depth is quite as good as Westbrook College's. No, and they don't have the experience. They don't get in. I don't think they get in as, much, as many games as Westbrook. The way Coach Grafton plays, everybody plays in every game. So they get the experience through every game. I don't, I'm not sure if Green Mountain does that or not. Working, struggling just a little bit from the free throw line here today. As he makes one of two, it's a two-point lead for Wildcats. Wiener with Q now on him. Spence to the rack. Nice move by Spence. Doesn't go down. Gets his own board. Back up. Count it. And he'll go to the free throw line. He had great inside position. Stan Webb trying to block it. Cedric Spence, as we said, a 6'4 junior out of Brooklyn, New York. Spence voted along with Bob Davies as the top newcomers in the Mayflower Conference this year. Even though Spence a junior, he is a junior college transfer. Good hustle by the big guy Wiener, but he touched it last and it'll be Westbrook College basketball. A little surprised that Wiener's still in the ball game with three fouls. Four minutes to go. Maybe give him a quick breather so he doesn't get a lazy foul. Looks like they go into a 1-3-1 zone, maybe to protect the big guy. I, I agree with you. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do. Vogel a three. Bang. Three for four from behind the arc is Derek Vogel. He's going to have close to 20 points here in the first half. Still a lot of basketball to go. Four minutes. Westbrook College by three. Inside. Shot no good. Work in the rebound. He gets hit in the face. And he asked for a timeout. And that's... So they'll get a timeout not charged to the team. That's an official's timeout. Workin getting whacked in the mouth and walks down court, stays in the lineup as Ben Willoughby checks in. Workin takes it from the free throw line, misses. Willoughby though, good job on the board. Shoots off balance, falling down and he hits it. That's a huge play for the freshman. Coming in off the bench and being able to do some, some good things for the Wildcats. What a job by Ben Wilby, the freshman out of Palermo, Maine. There's that city again. Oh, he stepped up. That freshman stepped up huge for him. Willoughby draws the charge. It'll be on Gary Alvarez. And Alvarez, fuming, livid. Ben Willoughby he says he actually, I believe it was China that he actually lives in. <laughs> Palermo's the mailing address. And Coach Tolan said, well, use Palermo in the book. But again, that's just a little bit east of Augusta, near the coast. He gave me a geography lesson the other day. He was sitting here talking. He's telling me all the towns around there. And that's the amazing thing about Maine. There's so many towns and little cities, and I don't think I know one-tenth of the towns <laughs> in our own state. Lane violation on Green Mountain. Willoughby doesn't need it. And boy, what a plug. He has just come in and given Westbrook College four points and good defense. Stolen by Workin. Willoughby picks it up. Off for Lennon. Vogel. Fake. Bucket. Wow. Poetry in motion, and Eric working again on the defense with the steal to start the whole thing. He's stepping it up on the defensive end. He's done a real good job this half. Has he ever. Vogel, steal. Good decision there. Very good decision. Kill's going to launch. Says, no, Vogel, you're the guy that's hot. Misses, loose on the floor, and a traveling violation will be whistled on James Young. 6'6 freshman out of Neptune, New Jersey.
Coach Dempsey, really, you talk about a recruiting job. You talk about a recruiting job. I agree a Vermont with you, yeah. school, he's got kids all over New Jersey and New York. He's really getting down in there and finding some quality kids, and he's really helped his program. But right now, Westbrook College is in fuego okay, listen, as a team. They know this fight, so I'm going to call it right now. I'll tell you one thing. Kansas, the two freshmen have stepped right? up. Kansas, McClure being I aggressive wanna, on the defensive, then, getting, the, getting that little the tip in on the, on the I think it was the Davies shot. And the Willoughby stepping into the charge, the rebound, and putting that back shot. This defense is taking them right out of the game. So stay right after it now. Now, listen. The other thing is this. Uh, who, 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 who are you guys? I get uh, 22. Okay, listen, he's, he's got three fouls. I don't know if he's got me. Well, okay. Wait, 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 wait. The big guys are in foul trouble. He's not going to try to block Exactly. The big guys are in foul trouble. Let's go. Let's go. Come on now. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Like I was saying, the freshmen have stepped it up. They've done a great job replacing work in the in SDs, and when they get in there, they're doing a great job offensively on the rebounds. And Coach Graff from Smiley telling his players, hey, the big guy's got three fouls. Let's get in there. Willoughby, wow. Straight up, total confidence. Two more for big Ben Willoughby. Six points here. You heard Coach Stone in the huddle. And their big men aren't going to block shots. They're going to stand straight up. Let's get the ball inside. And they, what does Westbrook do? They get it in the first time. Kewen, again, working it defensively. Goverski drives, dishes down low. Nice pass. They go across, and the ball is stolen by Vogel. And Lennon spins away from the traffic. He sees it coming, and he gets hacked from behind by Spence. I think that might be his third. I'm not sure. What a job by Vogel and then Lennon. He caught the ball, sensed the traffic, and just spun right away with his first dribble. And, folks, that isn't easy to do. That's a court sense by the point guard, knowing someone's going to be there. And that time, Wiener dishing across for George, maybe one pass too many, because Vogel got back inside the passing lane, made the steal. And Lennon misses the first free throw. Western College, a little bit lackluster here in the first half from the free throw line. One of two for Lennon. 47-35, Westbrook College by 12. What an explosion they have just gone on. They're actually on a 12-0 run right now. It was 35-all at one time, and as soon as we say that, Cedric Spence gets one back. Vogel out ahead. Goes in, gets hit. He'll go back to the free throw line. And you know, the spark, the spark of this, of this surge by the Wildcats was led by Workin and Willoughby blocking shots, taking a charge. Willoughby hitting the two jump shots. That was the key to this, this spurt by the Wildcats. Get a look the crowd on hand, and now Spence with three fouls. So you got your three big men all with three personal fouls. George, Wiener, and Spence with three apiece. And I think Gaversky, their point guy, has got two. Number 22, Blaine. Vogel, one of two. 48-37, a minute 40 to go in the half. Westbrook College looking to go to Idaho for the second consecutive year. Working that time on the much shorter Golversky. He actually doesn't block it. He does, but he draws the foul. And Golversky shifting his body at the last minute caused Working to pick up the personal, but that only his first to go along with three or four blocks. <laughs> I think that's pretty well done. We'll buy that anytime. I did a piece on Westbrook College to start the season for Fox 51. I did a story on them and talking with Derek Vogel and Coach Kraft and, and saying, How, you know, can you match last year? Of course, Ron, you're a big part of that 30 and 5 season, amazing year. Can you match it? And they said, I don't, I don't think we can really match it. Coach Grafham's word was, I don't think we can come close. Kuhn off a screen, in and out, Willoughby. He's playing huge for the Wildcats today. Spence pulls up, and he answers back. Cedric Spence now starting to heat it up. 
Green Mountain needs that spark. They need someone on that team to step up for them. Lennon changing the offense. And then you know, Coach Graff said, I don't think we do 30, but 20, 21, 22, sure. And look where they sit, 23 and 9, entering today's action. Vogel in traffic, floats it off. Lennon fights for the board. It's actually knocked out by Goverski. Ben Willoughby will sit down, and let's listen to the hand for this young man. Wow, what a spark. Boom. And then Vogel said, I think we can do just what we did last year. And they're a half away from doing that. Lennon takes a rare shot. Off the window, doesn't fall. Wiener the rebound. Kuhn keeping the ball out of Golversky's hand. Spence spotted by Perkin. Vogel for Lennon. Lennon fakes in the paint. The ball loose, Vogel fights. Looks like they got Eric Workin with a foul. Foul on Workin as the ball came free at the last second. Webb was going to have an easy layup. Tough break for Westbrook College. And Lennon that time, a little bit indecisive of what he wanted to do. He was going in, really wanted Vogel, but the passing lane was cut off. You saw the around the back almost pass and pulled it back up. A great move, but couldn't quite finish. I think he was trying to do the same thing Jacques Vaughn did for Kansas last night. Almost. It's 50 to 41 with 8.5 seconds left in the half. As George makes the first free throw. Second one missed, but there's Wiener. Put back, no. George slams in there, no call. And now we get one, and Fox starting awfully late on that one. It's on Wiener, and it's his fourth. Yeah, I, 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 once again, I question why Matt Dempsey had both his big men, and especially with less than a minute to go. Well, Rich Rosario injured yesterday the ankle, the 6'3 freshman out of Brooklyn, New York, and he's a player. He had a good game yesterday. He's unable to go out of the lineup, and 25, Jerry Joy was uh, up all night sick. He has played. <laughs> As Stan Webb makes the first free throw. And again, he doesn't have the, quite the depth in the bodies to go to. The other players on, on his team have yet to see any action, so there can't be a lot of confidence in, in their abilities. No, you're right there. A good point. 52-42, stolen by Lennon. Seven seconds left. Lennon pulls up. <laughs> Andy, Andy Lennon thought he was going to get an offensive foul. They jumped up at the official. He's going to call a technical foul on Vogel for the second day in a row. DV is going to get a T for hanging on the rim. So Lennon will shoot his free throws. Then we'll go down to the other end with four seconds left. They'll shoot the technicals, and they'll get the basketball with four seconds left. So big free throws here for Lennon because Green Mountain could get four points out of or five out of their upcoming Foul shots and possession. Now, once again, that foul isn't charged Derek Vogel. That's a bench foul. As you so astutely pointed out yesterday. <laughs> and that's an SAT word that that's the young right. kids coming to the school have to know. Exactly. I get one a game. <laughs> and of course, Ron, we got to mention the fact that you dressed up looking <laughs> dapper. Well, this time you gave me a little bit of notice. I still didn't like my odds of coming in. Lennon does make both his. Now Goverski rattles it out. And that's just what the Wildcats are looking for. 
We get a look in at Coach Dempsey and his team. He's talking over the last four seconds here. And he misses them both. Can you imagine that? They are rattled right now. Green Mountain is rattled. Talking with Coach Johnson before, he said, if we come out with a big run like we did yesterday, I don't think these guys have the staying power that Castleton does, and, and we could see them wilt. Kowarski will get the shot off, and very close to going down, but it doesn't. And one half of basketball, and Westbrook College using a 12-0 run in the last five minutes to get themselves up by 12. We head to the locker room 54-42. And just an amazing first half performance by three people come to mind right off the bat. First, Derek Vogel. Second, Eric Wernigen. And third, Ben Willoughby. And of course, a lot of other players playing big roles for the Wildcats, but those players, especially Willoughby, because that's something I don't think Coach Grafham was counting on today, was eight points off the bench from Ben Willoughby. No, I agree. And you can't leave out Aaron McClure. Aaron McClure stepped in as a freshman going against one of the best scorers in the Mayfile Conferences in Ole George, and didn't back down. And you got to love that as a freshman. I mean, he didn't show any 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 lack of intensity he was right with him the whole time even though he did pick up four fouls he showed a lot of character in there and four players on each team are getting Mayflower conference recognition three apiece on the team and top newcomers they each got one uh, as the top newcomers Cedric Spence and Bob Davies for Westbrook College top newcomers for the conference and then the MVP of the conference of course Derek Vogel and then also on the all-conference team Gary Kuhn and Andy Lennon, and then for them, their top three players, George Spence and Wiener. Actually, it's uh, Goversky, Spence, and Wiener all on the all-conference team in the Mayflower Conference. Well, we played half of basketball at the Finley Recreation Center, and 20 minutes still to come, and that's what stands in the way of uh, Westbrook College and another trip to Idaho in the NAIA Nationals. We'll take a break, and first, we'd like to present to you another feature. We'll run it again here today on Gary Kuhn, the senior from South Amboy, New Jersey, going over 1,600 points in his career yesterday and today, 300 and... 55 threes now in his career and we'll take a look inside what makes this guy so special and such a great shooter Gary Kuhn we're back after this on the Westbrook College Television Network you're after I want something great I want something that nobody's ever done before why we ain't great we're just some guys from Jersey when Vinny said that to Eddie in the 1983 movie, Eddie and the Cruisers, he may have been selling his band just a little short. And if you said that about Westbrook College's senior guard, Gary Kuhn, you definitely would be selling this long bomber short. Because not only does Kuhn hail from South Amboy, New Jersey, he is also a great basketball player. In Kuhn's first collegiate game, he made 10 of 11 three-point shots. And although it was a memorable game, it's not his favorite. My favorite game was all of them. <laughs> They all, they, I mean, just to play for Westbrook is, and Coach Grafman and the coaching staff is a lot of fun. Gary Kuhn has scored 1,584 career points. An astounding 1,053 of those have come from behind the arc. That's two-thirds of his scoring coming from 19 feet, 9 inches and beyond. The thing about Gary is that he can create his own three-pointer, which is very difficult to do because he's probably got 26 or 7-foot range. Depends how I feel that day. I could step over half and let it fly some days and other days. You know, maybe just NBA range. Kuhn is a pure shooter, but it's something else that separates this kid from Jersey and the rest. Courage. Uh, and the fact he doesn't think about it. He's a shooter before he gets the ball. Gary Kuhn will finish up his brilliant career at Westbrook College this weekend. And this three-point king will be gone, but not forgotten. From Portland, I'm Jay Harper for the Fox News at 10. Oh, can you believe it? Everything's going for Gary tonight. What have been your first year experience here at Westbrook College playing basketball, your overall impressions? Well, I think one of the things is Coach Grafton's positive style towards, towards all the kids. He's actually, you know, he looks at the people first. That's his people, and then that's his basketball players second. Uh, the transition from high school to college has been has been a, a tough one, but you know, Coach Grafham and Coach Johnson and this coaching staff have made it pretty pretty easy to 
to transist? Um, I've had to almost learn how to play the game over again. Uh, we play a much more up-tempo style of game here at Westbrook than I did in high school. And I've also had, uh, learned what it takes to win. Uh, my high school team, we didn't win very many basketball games. And this is a very winning program. And uh, they've taught all of us how to do that very well. He always gives us a chance. You know, everyone gets in the game usually. and. It's always positive. You, you don't hear anything negative during the game from Coach Grafham or from Coach Johnson. I think one of the biggest things is the speed of the game from high school and college is much faster and much better athletes all, all around. Welcome back to the Finley Recreation Center. Jay Harper and Ron Crosby, our score at the half. Westbrook College, 54, and Green Mountain, 42. A great explosion by the Wildcats in the last five minutes and certainly getting themselves a 12-point lead after how poorly they shot to start the contest. Again, though, it all started with defense, and the shot blocks working with four in that first half. Well, it, Eric has done a great job defensively, and they're still not shooting the ball all that well. I mean, Derek Vogel has stepped it up. He's got 22 points. He's done a great job for him. But look back at the freshmen. They did a great job on the on the offensive boards, putting back a couple of rebounds, stepping up and taking a charge. I think that's the key of this game so far is how well they've played against the big big front of Ollie George and Justin Wiener. Once again, I'd like to uh, thank Key Corporation, Key Bank, uh, for sponsoring the Mayflower Conference Championships. You see the Final Four t-shirt, one that I wore to work last night. I kept the one I got yesterday <laughs> and wore that to work last night. But uh, thanks to them for sponsoring along with Pizza Hut for making this all possible here at the Finley Recreation Center. Great crowd on here and just a great tournament. We've seen nothing but sensational NAIA basketball the last couple of days and still to come, the women's final. And, of course, the Wildcats will be looking to move to the finals in the championships out in, believe, is it Iowa or Oregon that they go to? They go to Oregon. They go to Oregon, so they're looking. That comes up next. But, again, that first half scoring, Derek Vogel leading the way, 22 points for Vogel, three threes. He was in fuego, really doing a great <laughs> job for the Wildcats. Right behind him, as we said, Ben Willoughby eight points off the bench and what a job he did working only four points but boy he played bigger than that defensively shot blocking steals and whatever Bob Davies had five Webb four Kuhn four Esty a deuce Aaron McClure a deuce Andy Lennon the point guard three and look at the people you get in the scoring column you get two four six eight nine players in your scoring column that's great balance great depth on the other side of the coin for Green Mountain they have six people scoring Spence ten George George, 13, their two top scores. And then you had Wiener with seven, Joy, two, Koversky, seven, Alvarez, three. And they have foul trouble as we start the second half. They certainly do. They got Justin Wiener has four, Alamo Brown, their point guard's got four. Uh, Ollie George has, I believe, either three or four. They're in foul trouble. All right, we get set for second half action. We'll throw it back down to the floor as the Wildcats will inbound with the 12 point lead. It's the same starting five out there for Coach Jim Grafham. Andy Lennon, Bob Davies, Derek Vogel, Corey McClure, and Eric Werken. Werken with a nice move around, up and in. Werken says, well, I'm doing everything else. How about a little scoring for you guys? <laughs> and, that, and that's a great, jo great job by Eric Werken, taking it to the hole, because he knows the big men are in foul trouble. He's going to take it to him. You expect a great half from him. Spence on the pull-up. Vogel bothered him. They got two on one. Bounce pass, perfect for Davies, got away with a walk. Wildcats with a 58-42 lead, 16-point lead, and they had to come a long way back in this one. They were down 8 and 10 points earlier in the first half. Brown will try a three ball. No good, working the great box out. Again, numbers for Westbrook College. Vogel will pull up, a kiss, bang. This is the way you want to come out of the locker room. Ready to go, pumped up. 60 to 42. And maybe they're putting on the mask and the white gloves right now because they're starting to operate. They certainly are. They're running a break to, to perfection. Boy, they're getting the numbers out. Spence kicks back. Brown, another three ball. This time, gets it. I think he only called that a two. I think he had his foot on the line. Lead a f trail of fish, called it a two. And they do. Spot him up only a two. Lennon drives, kicks for work, and work and block. Gets it back up. No good. McClure in the paint. Spins around. 
Up, no good. Still loose, and Lennon somehow is going to come out of there with it. Got to get out of the paint. Vogel the pull up. It's going to fall, no. He had everybody on his feet on that shot. <laughs> Even you, I said, Jake. He's got such great shooting touch. I mean, you can't say enough good things about this young man, but the fact that his balls just hang around like that and fight to go down, every time he puts the ball up near the rim, that basketball wants to go in the hole. He's got that shooter's touch, a natural shooter's touch. And he works as hard as anybody on the offseason. We were talking, I'm not sure his career high if it's 41 or not. He had 41 earlier in the season to break Paul Peterson's single game scoring record. And I believe he had 41 in another game this year. It may have come against Green Mountain. Yeah, he, he, played, he steps it up in the conference. Shot missed and it bounces off George into Davies' hands. Yeah, he had 41 against Green Mountain the first time in their 98-81 win here at Westbrook College. Davies, a three ball, rattles off the front of the rim. And in their second contest, they won 97-89. Vogel had 26, Kuhn had 28. Kuhn love, to have, love to see a big man running the court. Nice job of rewarding him by Alma Brown. 62-46, the lead is 16. Davies wants it, goes in and gets it. How's that for taking it to the hole? He takes the ball to the hole as, be as best as anybody. Brown working out on top, Lennon on him, Goverski coming out, Davies flies at him, gets a piece. That's his third block on his, him alone. Davies pulls up, doesn't go, and George the rebound again. He's got those elbows sharpened and out. Stay out of that guy's way. Davies, another athletic steal, and he finds Vogel. My goodness. Bob Davies is such a great player, and I still remember that play earlier in the year when he blocked the shot, grabbed it, dribbled down, and jammed it. That had got to be one of the sweetest feelings for a player. You block a shot, then you go the other way and dunk it. And he comes up with another great steal. Kulverski, left alone, hits a three ball. 66-49. Freshman gonna go to work again. Kicks out for Vogel. Nice decision, real good decision there. Vogel in the paint. Wow. Great body control. That's it, that's that BC. By the PTP. <laughs> that BC's my own. I didn't, I didn't grab that one from that, uh, well. Look at Davies, steals it, and then gets thrown to the floor by Goverski. What a steal again. He had the steal. Goverski knew it, decked him. Rob Davies stepping it up here in the opening moments of the second half. How about the job of the freshman for the Wildcats? Davies, Willoughby, and McClure. Shows a, shows a great future for Westbrook, huh? You're going to lose one heck of a player in Gary Kuhn, Stan Webb. And Steve Burgess. And Steve Burgess. But look what you got coming back. You got Vogel coming back for his senior campaign. You got Lennon, the point guard, going to be a senior next year. And then you got those freshmen that you talked about. Estee, Estee will come back. The McClure brothers. I mean, your team is, is, is basically intact for next year. Yeah, Coach Graffin is a great... Coach Graffin, Coach Johnson, Coach Toll, and Coach Bowers do a real good job recruiting. Nobody knows who they're going to pick up this year. Getting Bob Davies, the main basketball player of the year last season. We're just seeing the tip of the iceberg and what that kid can do. He could end up like a Vogel himself. Vogel having a day. You can't stop him. You can't even contain him. 70 to 49, Westbrook College as Brown hits a tray. Westbrook can't fall asleep now. They can't get lackadaisical. This Green Mountain team can come back, tie this game up Alvarez within minutes. Goes back for Brown. <laughs> 
Alvarez will try a three ball. Oh, they're not going to go down quietly, it appears. They've hit four threes here in the second half. Vogel actually misses a shot. And they call a little touch foul on Willoughby. That's good aggressiveness, so. Seventy fifty-five, a fifteen point advantage for Westbrook College. The Wildcats asleep a little bit. And a nice spin move in there by Alvarez, but he doesn't get it down. And they'll draw the foul. Wildcats jumping out so quickly with a big lead. I think they've lost a little of that defensive intensity. Coach Grapham wants a timeout and let's listen in, but I think that's just what you're gonna hear. I agree with you there. He's gonna tell his kids not to get, go to sleep. Let's listen in to Coach Grapham. We got the basketball 35 feet, right? We're not even seeing a man. Now, who do you have? Uh, 44. Who do you have? I got 42. Uh, 15. 32. Now listen, it's going to be three points. It's an offensive rebound. So I don't want to get beat down the floor, number one. And I want to, and I want to make sure we got a hand up on the shooters. And down here, execute. Right? They can't, they can't stop any of you guys inside. Okay? So put the ball up with some four. Let's go. 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 let us go Certainly getting a hand up in the face, not losing their man, and executing on the offense. And telling his team that that's what you're going to see is three-point shots and them going to the offensive glass. Alvarez makes one of two. Webb the rebound. And the foul will be called on Gary Alvarez. Actually, that was Jerry Joy at the free throw line moments ago. The 6'3 sophomore out of Morris, New York. Davies will come in for Andy Lennon. Inside Willoughby. Ben Willoughby in double figures in scoring. What a confident shot he's putting up there this afternoon. He's feeling it. There's a kid we talked to on camera a couple days ago, and I don't think we jinxed. He's coming out and having a day. As is Brown here in the second half. That's his third. Third three in this half so far. They only made one three-point field goal in the first half. Did Green Mountain? I think they got five here. Willoughby with a nice move, but can't get it to go. And Brown coming back. It's 72-59. Green Mountain still hanging tough. But Alvarez loses it off his foot. Thirteen thirty to play, second half. Mayflower Conference Championship matchup. Vogel, the window. Count it. This was so great about Derek Vogel too. He really knows his angles off the glass. And that was a tough angle to use the glass off, and he just typifies a great shooter right there. And all your great shooters will tell you it's easier to use the window than it is to swish the basketball. I think Larry Bird told him that. <laughs> I love people who use the glass. Vogel, two more. Davies, the assist. Vogel's heading for 40 plus here this afternoon. If this doesn't become a blowout and he gets a lot of bench time, he is on his way. No better game to let it go, huh? He's got, he's over 30 right now. Round of three. Let's see if it was behind the arc. Willoughby checks back out. Another good solid effort in his two minutes of play. Now 
Alamar Brown, 5'8", junior out of Hartford, Vermont. Only one of two players coming out of Vermont, Brown and Wiener. And it is three free throws for the junior. And they got two great players out of Vermont and those two players. With all the colleges in Vermont, all in the same conference, boy, they're fighting for a lot of in-town talent, in-state talent, and there's probably not enough to go around, and that's why this team... Well, that's why Coach Gobbin feels like he has an advantage with those colleges being so close. He says, well, let those, don't let those four schools beat each other up through the conference, and we'll go down there, we'll, we'll dissect them, we'll do our thing, and that's, and that's why he's got the record he does. Point shooter. I do want to hand up. If they make them, that's fine. But, but, but I just want to make sure that, that, that we don't foul because, see, stopping the clock is exactly what they want to do because they, they, they need to rest. I don't want to do that. All right, now listen. Look, we, can, we, we can do anything we want. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, no, no, no. I want to no, no, take it right out. I want to let you go one four, okay, and do it. All right? Here we go. Come on. Be aggressive. Let's go. Come on. Good job. Coach Graffham right there saying something very smart and very keen to pick that up. Doesn't want to stop the clock. Doesn't want to foul because, yeah, they want to stop the clock. They want to rest. Their players getting all those minutes, and, of course, in foul trouble, they want as much rest as possible. And, of course, the more you stop the clock, the more threes they can possibly spot up here and get back in this game. Vogel gets bumped, draws the foul. Jerry Joy, number 25. Will draw the personal. 6'3 sophomore from Morris, New York. Not happy about the call, but Vogel back to the free throw line. Calm, cool, and collective, that boy. Free throw line has not been the friend of Westbrook College this afternoon. Misses them both. Second time today, Vogel has done that. Seventy-six, sixty-two. Goverski going in, up but not in. Aaron McClure out there with four fouls, gets the rebound. Davies wants a spot of three. Instead, he says, here's two for you, Derek. Thank you very much. Great hang time by Derek Vogel. Again, the hang time and the body control. Hate to keep talking about it and harping on that fact, but my name is Harper, and <laughs> damn, he does it well. <laughs> nice dish, but George, I believe, steps, and I don't know. He's lucky, he's lucky that call was made for traveling, because I think he might have gotten offensive right there. But do you agree with the traveling call? Yes, you're, I do. You're allowed that step, and it just doesn't look pretty <laughs> when you take that big step, but you're supposed to be allowed that. Davies all the way to the rack, misses his angle, goes down hard. Back come Green Mountain. Brown shot, well short. And a slap on the arm will be called on Joy. I think that might be on Alvarez. You are correct. Alvarez draws his third personal. I can see the resemblance there. Why you keep making that mistake. <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, my. Go Derek ahead. Vogel. Go ahead, Mr. Hopper. Say it again. No, I'm not going to. I don't <laughs> need to. They can see it for themselves. He's showing him. Lovarski draws the foul. Vogel could be heading towards 50 in the half century mark. Alvarez, three ball. Everybody now heating up for Green Mountain. Again, they only made one three in the whole first half. They got about seven here in the second.
Vogel makes the first free throw, 81-65. 11 minutes to go in the second half. One of two for Vogel. And Vogel has gone cold from the free throw line. Looks for the steal, doesn't quite get it. And my guess at heading toward the half century mark, very close to happening. Vogel now with 43 points on the afternoon. Webb almost the steal. We hear the bells from the crowd. Strong move inside, doesn't go down, and out comes Lennon. On the break, he'll go for Workin. Workin, go to the rack. Doesn't go down, there's Webb. Stan Webb, again, finding his way towards the basketball, getting up and in there, and he'll go to the free throw line. Coach Graffham giving instructions to Andy Lennon on the sideline. Coach Graffham very tight with Andy Lennon and those two certainly know each other and what they want to do out there on the floor. Westbrook's got to stop making their foul shots, especially if they make it to Idaho. And again, a couple of free throws missed. I haven't seen him shoot this poorly from the line all year. Goverski. Count it. Don't count these kids out yet. 10-17 to go, and they're just hanging around. Hanging yeah. around. Matt Dempsey does a great job with these kids, telling them not to quit, not to quit. And they have they've shown a great performance here, even though they're down. Roversky converts the three-point play, so yet another three-point play, just a different variety. 81-68, the lead is 13. McClure up and under, doesn't go down, and the rebound taken away by George. Crispin White, along with Matt Dempsey, coaches of Green Mountain. Vogel right back into the lineup. Corey McClure back out. Davies, a great job on Goverski. And then Vogel gets enough for George to force the ball loose. Davies picks it up. Off for Lennon. Looks for Workin. Workin tries to make the save. And Tough pass for Workin to catch. And he's great at making those bullet passes. A little bit tough for him to handle. Wildcats growing a little stale here on the offense. Spence got it. Long outlet pass up for Vogel. Vogel floating, missing way up off his glass angle. And right now, an 11-point game, and Green Mountain a chance to get it under 10. This one is not over. Vogel gets the loose ball off the block from Workin. He, he tried to get it up to Workin, but couldn't control the ball. I think we might have had a chance for a dunk there. That was tipped. That was tipped. And that'll stay with the Wildcats. Big possession right here, I think, for Westbrook College. I agree with you there. They need to score. And this crowd has grown very, very quiet. We haven't seen a bucket for Westbrook in quite some time. At least two or three minutes. Workin says, I'm your man. Maybe not. That ball know. did not want to go down.
Great job, Kuhn. And Wildcats with numbers, four on two. What a move! Wow. Wow, what a heads up play. <laughs> that is hep as Melrose plays from the Melrose kid. <laughs> uh, what a happening move that was. He tried to show it, I think, earlier that time. He showed it all and delivered. George gets it back on the slam. 83-72. Kuhn, three ball. Oh, I anticipated that one going down. I did up to too. We had a good look. I think they got Andy Lennon with a foul over the back. Surprisingly enough. <laughs> Plus, McCullers will now use a timeout. Seven thirty-eight to go, eighty-three seventy-two. Jay Hopper, Ron Crosby, and our camera crew of. Listening now to Coach Matt Dempsey. Matt Dempsey reiterating, it's not over. And again, Mark Cantor. Rob Fernhaber, Dennis Avery, Steve Poulos, Tony Ryan. The staff with us this afternoon on the Westbrook College Television Network. Mayflower Conference Championship matchup. Eagles Wildcats. Eagles have hung tough. They go inside for George. Floats in, has it blocked. Heads up play there by Vogel. Kuhn up and under, doesn't go down, working, they'll fly in. Oh, he must have dribbled on the baseline. Must have had that power dribble on the baseline. And it's still just an 11 point game. Oregon controls the loose ball. And they got numbers again. Vogel, the rebound, up, no good. Westbrook College cannot buy a basket. That time Derek Vogel went to his left hand. I think he should have gone up with his right. But it made a more stronger move there. That one. I don't either. Either no call or offensive. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's exactly what it should have been. No call or offensive. There's no way that was a defensive foul. Lead only at nine. Ollie George to the line and finishes off the three-point play. Have they scored just a deuce here in the second half? Seems like all their buckets, either the foul on the free throw line or a three. I know it. Vogel in traffic. Won't go down, and there's George on the boards. Westbrook College really struggling offensively. Davies will come back in. They need a spark somewhere. Brown for three. He came out. He came out in the second half. He's firing it up. It's 83-78. All of a sudden, it is a five-point game. Was 20 at one point. Now five. Lennon tries to use the window a little too hard.
Kowalski. Oh, they're feeling it now. They're feeling it now. They're feeling it now. What a comeback. And a steal. Joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah. It's 83-82. And Westbrook Collars will get the time out and watch Green Mountain celebrate. And Joy over there gets knocked down and I'm not sure what transpired. I was looking the other way. It is 83-82, 5.06 to go. A 20-point lead has evaporated. And again, who has been the better shooting team? All day long, it's been Green Mountain. Yes, they have. They, Alamar Brown, I think, has hit four threes in the second half. Gaversi's hit a couple. Alvarez, Alvarez has hit a couple. The only, buddy, the only person doing any scoring for Westbrook is Derek Vogel. They need, some, they need somebody else to step up for the Wildcats. And he's, he's missed a few here in the last couple of minutes. 43 points on the afternoon, but Westbrook College on their home floor right now. Something's happening to them that I'm not sure even we could imagine. We saw it developing, but it has just been a slow, steady process, and Westbrook College right now lacking offense. And they got to go inside the paint, I think, right now and get inside and get it done. Willoughby and Workin in the lineup along with Vogel, Davies, and Lennon. And the Westbrook College crowd up on their feet trying to cheer on their team. Well, right now, Green Mountain's got the tempo. They certainly do, and they're pumped up. Boy, those, those tired legs are suddenly feeling like I've slept for two days and I'm ready to rock and roll. Exactly. That's what adrenaline and momentum will do for you. Nice pass. Oh. So Derek Vogel will have to go to the free throw line. And this is where, as we talked about, Westbrook College has missed at least 10 free throws here in this contest. I mean, this game should not be this close, really, if they shoot the way they're capable of doing. You win championships at the line. If they can't hit their free throws, it's going to be close right to the wire. You got to look at all the uh, news cameras here this afternoon. and. They're all here, six, 13s over there, and I'm not sure if that would be eight on the other camera, but Gordy Hershiser over there with 13's camera, and I see Channel 6 cameraman at the other end. Dave Eads here from Fox 51. Derek Vogel looking for 44 and 45, but more importantly, giving a little breathing room for the Wildcats here. And Chief, that ball will not fall. Derek Vogel, right now, really, really upset with himself. That'll be the ninth team foul, so we'll come back the other way and go one and one. That's Workin's fourth foul, so Eric Workin's suddenly in foul trouble. Willoughby and Workin, the two W's will sit down and McClure and Webb check in. Big free throws here for Jerry Joy, 6'3", sophomore. And he knocks it down. We are tied at 83, 440 to go. What a game. Amazing game. Green Mountain with the lead. Now we'll see what Westbrook College is made of. Do they have the poise and the savvy? And can they withstand this amazing comeback by the Eagles of Green Mountain? <laughs> Foul will be called on Alvarez, but that's sending Westbrook College to the free throw line, and they got to make these. There's a kid that could spark him. It's Gary Kuhn who just checks back in. He needs to step up, and we saw him do it yesterday. Struggled from behind the arc all day, but when it counted the most, he hit it. Lennon coming into the season, one of their poorest free throw shooters, and changed his style of shooting, and really has picked it up from the line. And 
Kirk Scrappen has always believed he wants his point guard at the line late in the game. He believes in his point guard making the big shots. And he made the big free throws against Farmington. The second one flips out. And Jory able to take it away from Webb as Webb had worked in there to get the ball. It's 84-84, one of two for Lennon. Vogel, does he get it? Great defensive job by Derek Vogel right there. You see Lennon talking with Coach Graffin right now, actually telling Coach Graffin what he wants to do. He's got a feeling right now. You got to go with the point guard's feeling. 1-3-1 one, one zone for Green Mountain. Gary's going to find a gap. Lennon will spot a three. Got it. Wow. What a huge shot. What a huge shot by the gutsy point guard. Can't allow a three ball up now. 87-84, three-point lead for Westbrook College. Brown pulls up, got it. Wow, he's had a hell of a second half. 87-86. Kuhn, three ball, bang! Wow, there it is. What did we say? And can Green Mountain withstand that? Two three balls back to back and a little in your face action for Westbrook College. Brown tries to come back, doesn't go down. Joy gets the long rebound, put back, miss, tap, spits. Draws the foul, goes to the line, wow. 3-0-1 to go and it'll be 90-88 and a chance to come back within one for Green Mountain. Westbrook College with their small lineup in there for the last couple of minutes, and that hurt him on the defensive boards right there. And as quickly Coach Grafham realizes and comes back with Wernkin. Can't keep Greenwell in second efforts. There's no quit in either team. Free throw missed, and Lennon rips down the board. Again, Lennon just goes about his job throughout the game solid, and then when you need him the most, the team's starting to die. He comes up big. Two free throws, a three, a rebound. And again, Gary Kuhn also, he said, if there's a kid that could do it, he was. He spotted up the long three. Inside pass for Vogel, and a nice job by Joy, diving to the floor and knocking it away. And he saved an easy bucket there by Vogel. Nice job with it. Sophomore. Lennon will take a three ball. Doesn't go down, but working on the board. Oh, easy put back. Ooh. Didn't want to, but it did. 92-88. Westbrook College by four. We're at the 220 mark of regulation here. Spence comes in, and the foul will be called on Corey McClure, the reach foul. And Derek Vogel talks to the official and tries to tell him something that's going on on the floor. You get a look at the concerned coaching staff of Westbrook College. Ten team foul, so it'll be two shots for Cedric Spence. 6'4", junior from Brooklyn, New York. And again, these free throws so vital for both teams. Green Mountain has made theirs. Westbrook College has struggled. Bob Davies will check in for McClure. I think this is more of a defensive switch than a rebounding switch. Corey McClure does do a good job on the board, but I think we need to pick it up on the defensive end. I think that's why he put Davies back in the game. Right now, the five that they have out on the floor, to me, that's Westbrook College's best five. One of two for Spence. It's a three-point game. Did Justin Wiener foul out, or is he just keep saving him? He's been sitting for a long time. He did not pick up his fifth. This lineup has worked for Coach Dempsey, and he's sticking with it. You can't blame him there. As well, they stick with that 1-3-1 one, one zone. And the foul trouble caused him to go to that zone, and it's really helped here in the second half. Kuhn, another three ball. Oh! In and out, Vogel back up, draws the foul. 
Great rebound. There is, there is a lid on that basket. I, I swear. No, you can't do that on this station. <laughs> that thing was down inside the cylinder about four inches, and somehow it came back out, and Alvarez picks up his fifth foul. Geez, the last two games has been a lid on that hoop. Except when, except, except when it's close, it goes, whoop, there it goes, opens up. 92-89, Vogel to the free throw line. Two free throws, and I haven't seen Derek Vogel miss as many free throws as he has here this afternoon, and these don't get any bigger. The big captain's got to step it up here. Got to concentrate at the line here. Yeah, Mayflower Conference Championship game in your own building. You're looking for the return trip to Idaho, and you had a 20-point lead. It's gone, but you got the most valuable player, kid who's got 43 points in the afternoon at the line. I don't think you'd want it any other way. I have to agree with you there, and I think Coach Grab feels the same way. These are huge. The lead is four, chance to go five and make it a two possession game with a minute 43 to go. You get a look at Ian Merrill, former Westbrook College great. Huge free throws. Makes them both, it's 94-89. Spence goes back for Brown, a three ball. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Wow. 94-92, Mr. Brown. That's either five or six for him. You got a lovely daughter, and you got a great shooting point guard. Kuhn back, not good. He wants to hit the big shot. Westbrook College really wants him to. They're saying, let's let's go to Kuhn. He's our man. 94-92, minute six, and Green Mountain with the basketball. Need a big stop here. Can't allow a three. I don't know. Where Green Mountain will look. They got Wiener back in, working on him. They both have four fouls. George working on Davies, stolen by the Wildcats. A two-on-one. Kuhn up and in. I think Westbrook got away with one there. Looked like a kick ball. Matt Dempsey's out on the floor. Brown pulls up. No good. And the foul will be on Wiener. And that's his fifth. And he's all done, and what a big, big change. As you said, Westbrook may have gotten away with a kick. Gary Q with an incredible basket. Used the right hand on the left side with a man hanging all over him. Puts it down. The lead for Lennon foul. They'll go to shoot two. That was a kick ball, but they didn't call. Great defensive play by Gary Kuhn, I guess. And Coach Dempsey, really. There's not much you can do. Matt Dempsey, we've talked to him before the game, and we've seen his coaching style, a great coach, but he's upset, he knows it, but there's nothing you can do at this point. Both officials missed it. Yeah, he said he was screened, said he couldn't make the call. And a tough way to go down if this is the fate of... Uh, I believe Andy Lennon's the one that's supposed to be at the free throw line. They're sending Vogel, and I'm almost positive that low official pointed to Lennon, saying, you're at the free throw line, and I'm not sure here. Oh, Derek Vogel did a great job stepping up, saying, no, I'm going to shoot these foul shots. Andy Lennon, Coach Jim Grafham, heated discussion along the sideline. More concerned about on the defensive end, how they're going to do it, what he wants to set up. Your money man has come back to show Green Mountain green as he's cashing in. Got them both. All nylon. 98-92, 32 seconds to play. Can't allow a three here. Can't Brown's, allow a three. Brown wants it. If anyone should shoot it, it should be him. 
Great move inside by James Young. Quick timeout, 22-5 remaining, 98-94. And still not out of the woods yet. 22.5, and again, it may come down to free throws. It's a two possession game. You, you know the rule is that, that the clock stops in the last minute of the right. game. So, so, so take it right out and get it in if we can, okay? Right. Coach, how many timeouts do they have left? They have none, we have one. Okay, now, now listen, we're going for Hossman. Bobby's taking the ball out of bounds. We have one timeout left if you need it. You can run the baseline, get the ball in. We have to make foul shots in the last 20 seconds. If we can get the ball in Derek's hand, obviously I'd like to do that as you or anybody, okay? Now, listen, listen. And then uh, after that, just make sure that, that we do not foul. Make them, make them earn whatever they get. We, we got it? Now, you, you know that they're going to be grabbing and holding, so I don't want to yeah, say he, he grabbed me. Yeah, so you, you play tough. You play wildcat right now. Come on, here we go. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 I get a look at both coaching staffs and their huddles, and you listen in on Coach Grafham's, and I think he covered just about everything there. <laughs> and, and, and usually does in his timeouts. He's well prepared, well coached. The Wildcats will inbound, full court pressure coming. Tipped by Spence. He almost came up with a steal. The clock doesn't move. You think he would have lost three or four tenths of a second. I don't think it's quick, the time clock's quick enough. Lennon in traffic, and he'll be fouled with 19-3 to go. He's got to make the foul shots here. We have fans now. <laughs> what, you got Spike Lee over there or what? <laughs> Little guy's got to step up here and make this one. Got to make it count. Coach Johnson during the timeout said Green Mountain has no timeouts left, so they can't get a TO. Lennon misses them both. Now the clock. Four-point lead. Brown comes down. He's going to let it fly. You know he is. He does. It's long. Lennon the rebound. He's got queued out. And he gets fouled again. So Andy Lennon, after missing two free throws, will come back with two more. 9.3, 98-94, really. It would take a, a heck of a play here for Green Mountain to get it down the floor, get a three up, and then, of course, they, they may have time because they could get a quick steal in a basket, so Lennon has to make one of these. Andy Lennon has been clutch here this afternoon. Earlier moments made the big three and the big two free throws. This time when they're not quite so vital, still leaving the door open just a tad. And there it is. The lead is five and a chance to hit the century mark. One and two, it's still five, but the clock ticks. Brown struggling getting it up. Finds George, misses, and it's over. Westbrook College withstood everything Green Mountain had to offer, and great job by the Eagles of Green Mountain, and they gotta be proud of themselves. A nice job, and Matt Dempsey hugs his players. You see the fans, and you see Westbrook College celebrate, and the camera's all in, and what a great job. But I'll tell you what, what a basketball game by two fine teams. As we saw yesterday, we see it again here today. And a tough call down the stretch. Yeah, certainly West helped West. Westbrook College. Yeah. A great effort by the Wildcats I mean, coming out and withholding that comeback by Green Mountain. But geez, I, you have to believe the Green Mountain was there. They had their chance. And you see the players of Westbrook College shaking Coach Dempsey's hand. A lot of respect for Coach Dempsey. 
And that's what you like to see, two great programs. And the crowd now starts to get on it. As the music plays, we are the champions. Queen, Queen will never die. <laughs> Not as long as we have championship sports. And they're realizing it now and starting to get into it. A lot of fun to watch. What a feeling for, it is for the freshmen, huh? First time in a program and they're going to the national tournament. Well, Bob Davies he goes to the state championship game last year, Class C. They lose in that one, but he took his team all the way there. He comes here as freshman. They win the conference championship and they're heading to the nationals. I don't know if that kid knows how to lose. <laughs> But all, all these kids, yeah. I mean, anyone that's played for Westbrook College, even you, Ron Crosby, I don't think you know how to lose after four years here. <laughs> well, we never had a losing record here. Pretty amazing. First season, 13 and 13, and then since then, you never looked back. No. Great ride it was. 20, and, uh, and 20. These, these freshmen, hopefully they'll enjoy it as much as, as us five seniors did and Ted Quinn. 24 and 9. The record now, and a trip to Idaho hanging in the balance, and... This is the thing, you know, we gotta withstand all this and all the ups and downs and the jubilation, uh, the, the emotional up and down this game provided us. And the seniors, Kuhn and Webb over with the ladder and the net will start to come down. But we got the women's final coming up right after this one and we have to regroup and I think that one will be just as exciting as this one. Let's hope. Burgess hangs on the rim. A, lo a lifetime dream right there. Yeah. <laughs> the seniors, Kuhn, Burgess, and Webb, and again, Westbrook College, just finding sparks in all the places, in all the right places at the right time, and got just enough. Lennon, the big three, Kuhn, a big three. He hit two on the afternoon, as he did yesterday. Now has 96, 96 threes in his senior season. He had 98 as a freshman. But Willoughby Hughes today working huge. Of course, Vogel, I believe a career high. The ill Mike Lee up with the loafers on. Looks like Davies gets the rest of it. <laughs> well, he's no. going to leave some. Has Vogel been up yet? No, I haven't seen him up yet either. Well, you think they might leave the last one for Derek. You stay sure I'm taking their time on that. <laughs> oh, everybody's got to get a shot. And they got a whole nother net to go. That's right. They already got the ladder up on the other side as well. And Tim Sullivan, another freshman. Oh, and it comes down. It goes to Vogel. At this time, I'd like to announce the uh, All-Tournament team from Great Water Conference Tournament, uh, from Kansas State, Alan LaRoche. Hey, here's a feisty point guy from Castleton. Announcing now the All-Conference team. All tournament team, excuse me. John McDonough. McDonough and LaRoche. From Green Mountain College, Holly George. He played well for, those, for the Eagles today. He certainly did. I tell you what, I have a lot of respect for the kids on that team and of course the coach, but the kids really. There were some heated moments in there, but they hung together. And they showed a lot of class at the end of that game and it all stems from your coach yeah you are what you're coached in Lennon much deserved much deserved no question here who that'll be TV. He might have, he might have breached. 
We had 43, and he had one bucket was 45, and then two foul shots. He was close. Yeah, got close to the half century. Again, the free throw line kept him away from it. Westbrook College really needs to work on that. Tell you one kid who didn't get on that team, I think deserved it, was Eric Wernken, but. I agree with you there. Lennon and Vogel will go up to receive it. The two juniors, we spoke with them yesterday in our post-game wrap-up. Great kids. And what a special moment. And all the players touching it, and boy, they all deserve it. joined by Derek Vogel and Eric Work in a tremendous game this afternoon, guys. Big victory. Second half, though, some scary moments. You had the 20-point lead. It evaporates. What can you say about Green Mountain? They didn't really go away. They stayed tough, and you guys hung tough to get the W. Yeah, they, they're a real tough team, but uh, we thought we had it won a little too early, so we, we let up a lot on defense, and we let them back into the game with a good three-point shooting team. You can't let them back in like that, so we just had to pull ourselves together to win it. Eric, a tremendous effort this afternoon. Uh, not the big point afternoon for yourself, but the shot blocking is incredible. Two days in a row here in the Mayflower Conference Championship, you've just been immense. Uh, what's been going on with these blocks, and, and how's it been feeling for you? Um, I was in a little slump towards the end of the season. Coach just told me to use more energy and just leave it all out there, and it's, that's what it's been. I've just been playing with more heart, more energy, so I know I can do it. I just got to put my mind to it. Now, how does this feel for you guys? Second year in a row, deja vu all over again. You head to Idaho. What's the feeling this year? Uh, the, we're ready to play. We know what it's like down there, the majority of us do, and, and those that don't know how to run with us. So if any team down there wants to run with us, they're in for a fight. Now, of course, a career high, 45 points this afternoon. I thought you were heading for 50. What a brilliant afternoon. I mean, you can make a whole highlight reel of some of your shots today and the kisses off the window, but struggled a little bit from the free throw line. What happened there this afternoon? Yeah, I struggled more toward the end of the game. Uh, it was no nerves. It was just total excitement. I was, real, I was long on all my foul shots, and uh, I just couldn't loosen up a little bit. I was just so excited. So. Now, Eric, working in the paint against a couple of good bodies in there today, a Wiener and George and everything, but you held your own. What was the feeling of those players and, and what they did to you in the paint? Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for them, real good players. Um, I know I got to hit the weights this summer and uh, hope to see them next year. And I like, I, I like playing against them. Good players. Great job Thank this you. afternoon, guys. Conference champions once again. Congratulations. Go out and enjoy it. We will. All right, Derek Vogel, Eric Workin. We'll take a break. Back with you after this. Welcome back to the Finley Recreation Center. Jay Harper along with Ron Crosby as we get set for the women's matchup between Westbrook College and Linden State. We'll wrap up the men's matchup. Game one just moments ago by Westbrook College. 99-94 over Green Mountain. An incredible game. Westbrook College took a 20-point lead in that second half after being down 10 in the first half. They, they fought back, took a 12-point lead to the locker room, and then they hung on for the five-point victory. And again, the free throw line really hurt Westbrook College. They struggled from that position of their game and also the big threes by Green Mountain in the second half. They had seven threes, four of them coming from Brown, and they just did a great job at hanging in there. Well, it's a championship game. There's no, I, I, there was no way in my mind that Green Mountain was going to fold after 20 points. Now, Westbrook College missed 18 free throws in the second half, and that was, and that was huge because you take 18 points away from them. You know, and it's tough to battle with a team that's, that's hitting seven threes in the second half. It certainly is. Derek Vogel finishing with a career-high 45 points. A tremendous effort from Vogel, but he missed his share of free throws as well. He missed two from the free throw line in two different trips there, but he really, you look at his percentage, it's still way up there, free throw shooting compared to everybody else. Lennon and Wernken struggling from the free throw line for the Wildcats, but Derek Vogel, 45 points second highest scorer on the afternoon. It was Bob Davies with 10, along with Andy Lennon with 10. He had that big three and a couple of big free throws in that one stretch that really withstood everything for the Wildcats. And again, a tremendous effort. They got four points from Webb, two points from Aaron McClure, nine from Kuhn, 
And he had a big three along the way as well. Workin had eight, and of course the block shots. We talked to him, and what a great performance he had on the floor, as did Lennon, an all-around game. And looking at Green Mountain's final scoring, 21 for Jerry Joy, who came on strong in that second half. Brown finished with 18 points, excuse me, 21 points. And Ollie George had 18, and Spence had 15. And again, they moved to Idaho, a tremendous effort. And what can you say about Westbrook College and their performance? It was a very good performance all around. They